What's the possible liquidation value for Giga Media? It's ticker G-I-G-M. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Charlie Marr, and today we're gonna go over the liquidation value on Giga Media. Um, I hope this sounds a little bit better. I did upgrade mics. Um, so yeah, I hope this sounds a lot better now, and I got a lot more new things, so this will be a lot better. Anyways, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it, because I'm very bullish on uh, Giga Media. It's a typical buy dollar for 50 cents stock. Um, it's also a stock that is very easy to understand. Um, and I'll go ahead and explain that as we go through it, why it's just a, a, a simple and easy company to start with. Um, now, I will say before we get into it, this is a stock that's overlooked. It's a stock that nobody's paying attention to. There's no hype. You're not going to see a lot of media coverage. You're not going to see a lot of YouTube videos over it or like all these upgrades and downgrades. There, this is a company that's a small market cap stock. It's buying a dollar for 50 cents and it's practically the way that I've made millions of dollars in the stock market is investing in, it's investing in facts versus speculation. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go over this one. So the ticker is GIGM and let's go ahead and start digging into it. I will move myself as needed um, if I need to. So Giga Media, here it is, GIGM. It's currently trading for $2.34. Um, and we're going to be spending time in their financials. But first, before we get into it, let's go ahead and write down a couple of things. For example, what's its current stock price? 234. So let's go ahead and put that down. So its current stock price um, is, I guess we can just write it here, is $2.34. That's its current price. And then we're gonna get the market's cap. So let's go ahead and go back. You can see the market cap here right away. It's 25.86 million. So let's go ahead and write it in. 25.86 million. So this is what we're trying to beat. We're trying to get a better number than these here. If we can get something higher than this, it means that stock is undervalued. So again, we're going to be spending time in their financials. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, if we go, I'm, so I'm going to use Seeking Alpha. Um, I, I, I have the paying version, but I'm not paying for it. Uh, Seeking Alpha reached out to me and they said they were a huge fan. They loved my videos. They've been watching me on TikTok. And they, they just, um, I told them I use Seeking Alpha. And they were like, you know what? Let's just, we want to give you a free, like, uh, full membership. So I don't pay for it. And I'm just a free member and I love it. Um, but anyway, so here we are. It's Giga Media. Let's go ahead and go into their financials. You can see the little tab here. And we're going to start looking at the numbers. And we're actually going to be spending a lot of time in the balance sheet. So we're going to go, there's three different financial statements you'll run across inside the financials. You have their income statement, their balance sheet, and the cash flow. Um, and we're usually spending the most time in the balance sheet. So let's go ahead and go into the balance sheet right away. Sorry, my dog's making weird noises back there, biting his paw. Um, okay, so now that we know what the company's stock price current is, what the stock's current price is, and what its current market cap is, let's go ahead and come up with the liquidation value. So let's first look at their, I'm going to put myself, I guess, here. This works. I'll scroll down a little bit. So total cash and short-term investment. So we're going to stick to this current year. You know, we don't care what the company did in the past. We don't care what it's doing in the future. We want to know what it's worth right now as is. If a company was to maybe merge with it or maybe buy it out, um, or if they were to liquidate, what would it be? What would we get as investors, as shareholders? So the very first thing we want to look at is obviously their total cash and short-term investments. We can see that their total cash and short-term investments um, stands at $42.9 million. Now, um, let's go ahead and we, we, we can't do anything. That's cash. That's as, that's as liquid as you can get. Um, that, so we can't do anything with that. We're not going to discount that. We're not going to change that. That's just the cash on hand. Of course, in the future, if you ever come across a company like this and they do have a lawsuit coming up or something like that, that you know the number of, and it's not just the typical lawsuits of like the stock's gone so much and like they're trying to find something. You'll see those often. Um, then there's nothing to do there. So it stands at 42.9 million. Now let's go ahead and go down and see what else this company has. Like I said, this company is very simple, so there's not much to it. <laughs> um, there's no inventory. As you can see, they don't have any inventory they don't really have anything it's really just all cash and like the company's business so 
account receivables. So here we are, account receivables, we can see that they have, um, here's their account receivables, here's other receivables that you may apply, and the total receivables stands at 0.3, which is $300,000. Now, we wanna subtract 25% of that. We wanna grab everything, and we're gonna grab all the numbers that we're going to subtract, and then add those up, and then we're gonna discount that from the main price that we come up with at the end, which you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's $300,000 that it's owed to them. Now, let's just assume that this is kind of where you have to do more research. Like who owes them that money? Is that company that owes them money going bankrupt? Can they afford to continue paying that money? So we're not gonna get into that, but just to give you an idea. So let's just say for the sake of this video, that they're only gonna get 50% of that back, that they're not gonna get the full total account receivables, which means that's $150,000. I was gonna do the math, but <laughs> I mean, you guys get it. So they have um, $300,000 in account receivables. Let's just say that they're only gonna get half of that, so we would subtract $150,000 from that, which would leave us at $150,000. So this is the number we're gonna use to subtract it from the ultimate uh, valuation that we come out in. So we're going to put that off to the side. That's $150,000 that we're going to be subtracting, right? And we can go ahead and where is my little eraser here? Oh, actually, we can just leave that as is. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and remove all that. We already know the number. It's 150000 So we're going to remove all this. Just give me a second. I haven't figured out how to erase everything little by little. We're going to subtract $150,000 from the company's liquidation value. So let's go ahead and move on, see what else we got. Um, these are all current assets. I mean, there's nothing we can practically do with all these on here. We can scroll down, let's see what else we have. Long-term assets, um, again, they have no property or, or gross property or plan or equipment. Um, we can't do anything there. Um, appreciation, depreciation, we can't do anything there. Net property plan, again, we can't do anything there. Long-term investments, we can't do anything there. Goodwill, goodwill is one that we want to subtract. So whatever this company has in goodwill, it's nothing. So again, there's nothing in goodwill. We can't do anything about it. So we'll leave it as is. Um, other intangibles, they don't have anything in other intangibles. So again, we can't do anything there. They don't have inventory, they don't have goodwill, they don't have other intangibles, they don't have any plan and property. They're, they're, they're almost, practically this company's all of their assets and all of their numbers is just the cash and their investments, which is great. It's a lot, again, this is gonna be very easy. So that's, again, that's it. And once we're done looking at that, if we continue moving forward, we're already on to their current liabilities. This is money, again, that this is this is debt, money that's owed, money that has to be paid back. Um, here's their current liabilities. And then if you scroll down, you go you end up with their total liabilities. So again, there's nothing we can do here. So let's go ahead and now um, we're gonna grab the total equity, which is we're gonna grab all the company's current assets and we're gonna subtract that by their liabilities. So you can see here is their total assets, 56.7 million. This already does it for you, so you don't have to do the math. It's gonna subtract all of these total liabilities, which is 51.1 million. And we're gonna end up with, um, here's a total common equity, which is the one we're gonna use. Here's a total equity, 51.6 but we're gonna actually stick to the total common equity here. So 51.6 is everything that's left over when you pay all the liabilities from with the assets. Again, that's not subtracting anything. So 51.6 million, right? So let's go ahead and write that down. 51.6 million. We're gonna subtract everything we wanted to discount, which is nothing practically. We're only taking away $150,000. We can even do the whole number and it won't really make a difference. And let's see what this comes up with. That's 51 million minus 51.600 million minus $150,000. That leaves us at $51 million. That's, that's, that's how much money is practically left over after you liquidate this company. Now, let's be a little uh, harsh on it. Let's just round it down, okay? I love doing this. This is something that I actually do, right? So even if we came out with that number, even if we came up with 51.45, let's just round it down. Let's just say it's $50 million. So we're removing over a million dollars. Keep that in mind, okay? So that's it. That is the liquidation value of this company. It stands around $50 million. Where is it currently at? It's currently at... 
at a $25 million market cap. And then you can see where, where does most of this come from? It's mainly coming from its cash. You can't do anything with cash. So that's that number. Now let's, let's turn that into a per share value. So, so far, the market cap that it currently has is cheaper than its current liquidation value. But let's come up with the share value per share. So all we have to do is see their outstanding shares. So we're going to scroll all the way down on their balance sheet, and you can see it at the very bottom here. Total shares outstanding, total common shares outstanding. It's the same number, so you can grab either one, 11.11. .11. So let's go ahead and put that in. Let's go back to the, down here. Um, it was $50 million. That's how much money is left over divided by 11.1 .1 million. That leaves us at a $4.50 per share. If you want to round this, technically you're like at 4.51. That's the, that's the, that is the liquidation value per share. So this is the liquidation value. Then we have the, liquid, the liquidation value um, per share. I'm just going to put that, I don't know what to call it. It's $4.50. And it's currently going for $2.34. It's undervalued. Now, let's add a margin of safety. Let's just say we, we, we need room for error, right? We need, a, we, need a, um, we need a margin of safety. We need a safety net. Like, you know, let's see, um, and we're gonna do 50% discount. We're trying to buy a dollar for 50 cents. So we're gonna discount 50%. So all you have to do is multiply this by 0.50 or divided by two, technically divided by two. Um, so that divided by two, that means this stock is a buy at, $2.25. If the stock is trading at or below $2.25, it's a buy. It's currently trading at $2.34. In my opinion, that's not too far apart. I would feel comfortable buying this stock at this price. If you want to wait and you want to be picky and make sure it's under $2.25, that's perfectly fine. But you know, I I I'm, I keep it simple, you know? I don't like to try and catch the perfect bottom. I don't like to play those games. To me, I like to keep it simple. Buy when the value is there and sell when it's not. Is the value there? It's there. We're seeing it's worth $4.50 if you were to liquidate it, and it's trading for $2.34. It's a buy under $2.25. That's at a 50% discount. Let's see what discount it's currently at. So let's go to the percentage calculator. So it's fair. Its liquidation value is $4.50, right? And it's currently trading at $2.34. It's trading 48% below liquidation value. Now, if this were to run from its current value of 234 to 450, what would those returns be? Like 90%, 92% return on your investment. So what is the ROI that we're looking at here? We're looking at a possible, was it 92 point something? Let's just say 92, let's round it down. Again, we're, I love rounding numbers down. It makes things safer for me. It's a possible 92% return on my investment. That was a terrible rate. <laughs> I'll do that again. That's a 92% return on my investment for this stock. And keep in mind, sometimes these stocks, they go above fair value or liquidation value in this case. They become overvalued. So let's go ahead and go even deeper into it. You know, let's be a lot harsher. Let's be, let's be tougher on this, right? So let's do it again. But... Let's, um, let me clear this out, 234 and 25 million, right? So that's 234 and 25 million dollar market cap. So that's the current numbers. This is where it's currently at. It's at 234 and it's at a 255 million dollar market cap. Let's put that off to the side. Those are terrible numbers, sorry. Now, let's grade it a little bit harsher, right? Let's just see what the number comes out with like this. What we're gonna do is Let's just forget all the other assets. Forget everything else. Let's just use what they have in cash. And, and there's more to talk about, but let's just use what's in cash available right now, right? So again, total cash and short-term investments, $42.9 million in cash. So let's go back here. Let's put that number down. That's $42.9 million in cash. Oh, whoa. $42.9 million in cash. Let's see if I read that correctly. $42.9 million in cash. Okay, let's just round it down. Let's just say they only have $40 million. So we're going to subtract that $900,000, right? So let's just, again, we're grading it harsh. So we're going to say they only have $42 million in cash. Let's subtract, again, let's subtract all their liabilities and pay off everything that they need to pay. So let's go down and look at their total liabilities. Total liabilities, 
5.1 million. Let's just say it's six million dollars. Uh, let's just say, uh, let's just keep it as is. 5.1 million dollars. So we don't have to play too many games here. 5.1 million dollars, right? Okay. So we're going to subtract 5.1 million dollars from this. Let's see what we get. I'll do the math here so you guys can physically see this happen. 42 million dollars in cash minus 5.1 million in liabilities, which is paying back everything. That leaves us at 36.9 million dollars. So the liquidation value, just looking at the cash, not even including all the little assets, is 39.6, 36.9 million dollars. 36.9 million dollars. Let's round it down again. Let's just round it. Why, why not? Let's just do it. Let's just say 36 million. That's $36 million valuation on this company. Let's get, let's, and it's currently trading at $25 million. Let's go ahead and, and look for its, um, its share price, which is they had 11.11, .11, right? So 11.11, .11, let's go back. $36 million. And remember, we rounded things down. Again, this is why I feel so confident over my investments. We rounded, we, we removed like $2 million already. And this is just off the cash. This doesn't even include everything else. And on top of that, we're using a margin of safety. How is this not, a, this is, a, this is, you're smooth brained if you don't think this is undervalued. Anyways, $36, $36 million, that's the liquidation value of this company. Let's go ahead and divide that by its outstanding shares, which is $11.1 .1 million. Went too far. That's three dollars and twenty-four cents. Technically, a little more. Again, let's just round it down to two to three twenty-four. That's where the stock's price should be. That's three dollars and twenty-four cents, and it's currently going for two thirty-four. It's undervalued. Again, let's look at the let's look at the difference here on the percentage wise. Let's just say you bought it at 234 and you sold it just based off the liquidation value that we came up with on the cash. What was the number? Three, uh, 324? 324? That's 38% return on your investment. It's actually a little bit higher, but let's just, again, let's just round it down. That has nothing to do with the number there. That's a 38% profit return on your investment. And if we bring back everything else, it was actually, what, 92% profit? It's undervalued. And it's, it, do you have a margin of safety? Of course you do. Of course you have a margin. It might not be 50% based on just the cash. 324. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, 324. And it's currently going for 234. It's, it's, it's trading almost 30% below its liquidation value, which is still profitable. And again, that's just the cash. That's not including everything else, which, again, th that part is not really the measurement. It, we're just going to extreme measures. We're looking at, like, worst-case scenarios, you know? So does this stock pass so far? Of course it passes. The stock passes so far. And so based on the real numbers we got... It's liquidation value is 450, and I think it was what, like a 50 million dollar market cap? I don't remember the market cap. Anyways, let's focus on the share price, and it's currently going for 234. So so far it passes. Now let's look at some other things. Do they have any Do they have any 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 lawsuits? If they do, you want to subtract that from the number that we got, but they don't. You know, they're good. Um, are they over diluting their shares? Are they screwing over their investors? I don't know. Let's go ahead and find out. Maybe, maybe they are, and maybe it would, it would be scary. So let's go ahead and find that out. Let's go back to let's get, let's get rid of Finvis. We don't need Finvis. We don't, we don't look at. We haven't looked at a chart at a single. Have you noticed that we haven't spent a single second looking at a chart, and we know the stock is undervalued? Who needs charts? I can already see the numbers. I don't need to look at a, at a chart to tell me if this is a buy or not and where I'm going to buy and where I'm going to sell, how much I'm going to make. I don't need a chart. If you spend an hour looking at technical analysis, you wasted 55 minutes of your life. You only learned five minutes of no, technically nothing, in my opinion. Okay, so let's see. Let's go ahead and go down. Here's the total shares outstanding. 
It's not undervalued. They're not diluting shares. If if they were diluting shares, that would be something to kind of pre-calculate and add that on top of this to have an idea of what it more or less, on average, it could be if they kept diluting shares. But they're not diluting shares. That's not a problem. And it's been many years. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years and having diluted shares. I don't think they'll dilute shares anytime soon. And even if they did, it won't be that big of a deal because we have a huge margin of safety. It's that undervalued that it would still get us some value if they were dilute something. And I don't think they'll dilute shares. Let's look at something else. How much money are they losing? Let's look at their net income. This is not necessarily a good way to approach this, but I like to do it just for fun. Let's look at net income. Let's see how much money they're losing. Why? Because if this company's liquidation value is 50 million, I remember that's the right one, but let's just say it's 50 million, but they're losing $30 million every year, then it's it's dangerous, you know? I mean, they only have like a year and a half left. I mean, they're gonna, they, what they're losing is eventually gonna eat out, it's going to eat away their 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 liquidation value, their value, the money left over. Um, again, if it's worth fifty million dollars, and maybe they're losing, uh, I don't know, if they're losing forty million dollars, that's a huge red flag. That's a, this will be gone in a second. They're gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna disappear. So we need to make sure is that something that could happen, and we'll, we'll find out. Let me erase all this real quick. I don't even think I need to delete this. So we're going to go all the way up. And I think I already explained this, but when you're in their financials, there's three statements you're mainly going to focus on and always see. That is their income statements, and then you have their balance sheet, and you have their cash flow. And you can see them here. Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. You're going to spend the most time in their balance sheet, and then maybe second on their income statement and third cash flow. They're all important. Income statement. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick. Let me push this back up. We're going to go down and see their net income. And then we're going to look at one more thing afterwards. Net income. They're losing some money, okay? They do lose money per year. They, used th they lost $3 million here, $1 million here, $1 million here, and $2.8 .8 million. Let's just assume that it's at $3 million. So let's round it up. Let's just say they're going to lose $3 million more, okay? They're worth $50 million right now. If we remove $3 million, that leaves them at what, 47, 47, 48, 49, 50, yeah, 47, I don't know if I did that right, 47, 48, 49, 50, yeah. Even if we if we prematurely remove potential and net income that may be lost or money that like is being owed or money that's just being disappearing, that, that still leaves them at $47 million and they're going at a $25 million market cap. They, it, it would have to lose so much more. It, it would have, like it has many years left. Okay, so by the first year, let's just say it's let, let's just just to give an idea. This is this isn't correct, but just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, right? It's currently worth fifty million. This isn't happening or anything like that, but just to give an idea, let's just say in year two it ends up being worth forty-seven million. And again, we rounded it up. We went to three million. When sometimes on average it's losing like one point something. So we're again we're you looking at the worst case scenario. There's forty-seven million by by year two. By year three, you're looking at what forty uh, four. Four, five, six, seven, forty-four million. And by year three, you're looking at forty-one million. You still bought it when it was worth twenty-five million dollars. At any time among these, I mean, among year one, two, or three, someone could come buy them out, and they're going to buy them out for around fifty million dollars, or around forty-seven or forty-four million. You'll still profit, even if they buy them for forty million dollars, and the company takes a small loss. Who cares? You bought it at twenty-five million dollars. You still have a profit. That makes sense. It's undervalued. So, yes, it checked everything. Is it undervalued? Yes. Are they diluting shares? No. So it passes. Are they losing a lot of money, like a high burn rate to where it's c completely killing the company year over year and it'll catch up to where you bought it? No. So it passes. It's a great stock. It's doing well. We can look at the equity to see how much it's losing in equity time over time, but I think it's going to be small. Now, just one thing to remember, on a dying company, time is your enemy. As you saw, we went from $50 million to we ended up at got a 41 million, but that took like three years. It was a very slow process. So in this case, the longer you hold a company like this, time is your enemy. Of course, on the other hand, if, 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 if a company is making $5 million per year, so let's just say it's worth $50 million, right? And it gains another 5 million in year two, and then it gains another 5 million in year three, 
we've gone from a $50 million liquidation value to $60 million. In this case, on a growing company, time is your friend. Those are probably the best stocks to come across because, again, you can buy it. Let's just say the fair value was 450, right? Oh, it is 450, the liquidation value. It's currently at 234. Well, over time, this will be up. So even if this stock, let's just say it's at 234, right? And this stock ends up being worth now three dollars because it's going up. Now it's now its new value is five bucks. You can keep chasing that. <laughs> you can make a lot of money holding a stock like that. Of course, I'm not. I don't like to do that. I like to get out of these stocks quickly because I like to compound. I like to turn my ten million. Let's just say I invested. I don't know. Uh, let's just say I invested uh, fifty thousand dollars into this company and I double my money. And I turn that into $100,000. Well, I can then, hey, chill. I can then put those $100,000 on a second investment and turn those $100,000 into $200,000. And then I can do that two more times and end up at 400 k and end up at 800 k And again, anyways, that's Gigam. Um, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more little things to look into it. But now you understand where that value is. Now, let's just look at the chart for a second before I close this chat. Here's a chart. That's currently where it's at, at 234. In the past, you can see how many times it's had that spike. Over time, investors will understand what it's valued at. Either it'll get bought out, either the company buys it back a lot of shares because they know it's undervalued, or, or um, they liquidate, which is a lot more rare. Usually they get bought out or they merge, but if they merge, you still take to, you, you technically still get a profit because, you know, um, and you can see in the past, it's traded as at 250 multiple times in the past, and it's had those spikes. It ran to 370, it ran to 361, it ran to 371, it ran to 437, it ran to 374, to 387. This year, in the beginning of the year, it went to 556, over 550. And then even beyond that, not too long ago, it was at 333. You could have sold at any one of these spikes, or you can wait for it to hit 450, whatever it is you're planning to, and there's profit to be made the whole time. This company is constantly giving you something like that. And the craziest part is that, like, what I've seen, this is more into the research, the CEO, um, I think, like, four or five years ago, he only had 400,000 shares. But every time the stock falls at 250 or, like, 260, he buys more. So he's actually increased his shares from 400,000 to over 2 million. He's more than four times his shares owned. He knows the value of this company. He knows it's undervalued. He knows that he can sell it a lot higher. These are the kind of companies that end up being worth so much in the future. And then they, and then over time, they actually end up trading a lot higher. So you can either hold for a while or you can sell at the peaks. I don't mind selling at the peaks. You know, I mean, I like to buy when the value is there and sell when it's not. Or when it's ran up too high, that it's too dramatic, which we've seen happen with Geo for me. I have no problem taking gains. And then you can buy it back lower again and repeat the process. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. Um, again, this is a very e this was a very easy one, but I felt okay doing it because I know you didn't get to see all the numbers too much. But it's it's very easy, you know. Why why um, it was a good one to start with for you guys to kind of understand where I'm coming from, and then you can add more things, more complicated things as we go on. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, why why should I speculate on a company when I know this company is undervalued? It's just a matter of time. Now, I can't predict when it'll do it, but I know it will. I know it's undervalued. It's just a matter of time. I'm safe. Again, this stock could drop to $2. Why would I be worried? I would, I would actually I'd be buying more. Do you understand where I come from when, I don't, when I'm confident and I don't worry when stocks go down? You just saw the math. We paid all their debt. We did everything we did. There's money left over. We have a huge margin of safety. Unless something crazy comes out, but then again, we have a huge margin of safety. Maybe it ends up being worth $3. Well, who cares? We bought it at two thirty four. We can still profit something. And even if it was worth less, let's just say it ended up, it ended up being worth $2. We bought it at two thirty four. The downside is still a lot smaller. You know, We're not losing 80% of our money, 50% or anything crazy. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you like this video, if I should make more videos like this. Um, but I will see you guys on the next one. This is Giga Medium, G-I-G-M. My name is Charlie Marr, um, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure to like and comment. You know, it'll help the algorithm. It'll help motivate me make more videos like this. It, took a lot, it takes a lot of time. Um, but yeah, let me know. I'll see you guys on the next one. And for me, Giga is a buy. I can't predict when it'll happen, but we'll definitely see it have a spike, and we can make money off that. 
see you guys on the next one.